Hello, and behind me here is an MG Midget. A midget, that's the Diddy one. That sounds a, that sounds like the kind of word you can't really use any longer, but when you're referring to a car, you can. It's perfectly okay. It's perfectly PC. And look, look how cute it is. It's as cute as a little kitten eating a mouse. Well, it's got a scratch there. Let's have a closer look at it, shall we? Stainless steel exhaust, taxi rear lamps, Medieval torture devices for bumpers. 13 inch mini lights. Cute. I like the way the sill line swoops in back the other direction like a twirly moustache. I'm probably going to be completely alone with this, but I'm going to say it anyway. This car looks a bit like a koala. Yeah, I thought you'd disagree. Is the midget an Italian design? Because the more I look at it, the more it looks like an Italian car, rather than an Abingdon rust bucket. This is a very, very small car, as the name suggests. But I'm actually beginning to wonder how I'm even going to get in it. Uh, this is a, a tiny door. That really is a tiny door. And the, the space to actually climb in doesn't look fit for proper sized people. These don't look like MG midget seats to me. What are they? Uh, they're out of an MGF and they're fixed to the back of the bulkhead to give you as much um, leg room as possible. So, in other words, I might fit. Just about. <laughs> um. <laughs> no, that's not going to work. Do you need to assist your legs with your arms? Yeah, I'm too close there. Right, okay. So, inside, as you can see, the steering wheel is... <laughs> if I was any fatter, I simply wouldn't be able to operate it. But we have, of course, proper carpet. We have good old materials that you know aren't going to rattle and they're all going to work. And the, the feel of the switches is sturdy and not pretend tactile. A car from the days where they didn't tell you what the switches were for, you had to read the handbook, and then you put your own stickers on with your own writing so that you understand what's got. See, I don't know what that one's for. Perhaps I should ask if I should uh, press it. The wipers. That's for the wipers. But look at the size of the wipers. They're, what, they're about six inches long. Nice to see some quarter lights. It's nice to see some actual proper metal. And where do we, ah, right, yeah, that's our, that's our shut thing. You can't see it now because it's too close again. And if you want to get out of the car, you've got to get your elbow up here to get the thing there. Why didn't they put it there? Oh shit sound. It's quite clangy, but you, what do you expect? Getting out of a car is even more important than getting in sometimes. And to have it to have it there so you've got to reach around um, just seems a bit of an odd place to put it. Would it be easier to do it from the outside? Yeah, I think it would actually. Behind the huge steering wheel we have some clocks. One telling you the revolutions per minute and the other telling you the speed. They're nice and clear and uh, they, they look quite old. Oh, there's little things there to tell you which indicator you're using. There's the choke, there's the amount of fuel that we have, and there's Dennis the Menace. And uh, then we have the handbrake that looks a bit like a robot stick of rock. Time for my dignified exit so we can have a look to see what's under the bonnet. You must get your carpet dirty there. <laughs> Oh, I couldn't do this every day. That's ridiculous. <laughs> now I see why a young man like you got out of it looking like a 70 year old. Where's your flat cap? I've got one in the bag. 
<laughs> Excellent. Right, thank you. Let's have a look. Show us how it's done. Wow. Do you, did you ever time yourself? Uh, have, you I, got, I, have you got a PB for this? No. <laughs> well, you said so. And here we have a 1275 A series engine with approximately 78 brake horse. Yeah, something like. Uh, I think it's 78.9 is a very healthy amount of power from a 1275 engine. We've got some air horns as well here. Can we try those out afterwards? From what James was saying, the 1275 engine is actually the best one to have because the 1500, well, it was only in the, the heavier car, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the higher suspension and the emissions stuff on it. Can we try the horns then? Uh, not yet. Um, we have to wait till 11 o'clock because they're too loud. Um, so I'm allowed to use the horns for the duration of 11 o'clock in the morning till 10 o'clock at night. Otherwise I could get in a bit of trouble. So you've got 11 hours worth of constant getting in people's ears. Yeah. James reckons I won't be able to start this car straight away. So uh, and he's even offering a tenner, which is, which is ridiculous. Ridiculous, man. Well, I know you had to show me how to get into it, but starting it is a different matter, surely. Right, well, I suspect then that it's going to be either you've got to touch the throttle pedal or do something with the choke simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> Before that, you had to actually get into it. <laughs> Yeah, that's the that's the hardest challenge. Mm. Fine. Now, now the next challenge is starting the car. Well, I've found the key is underneath here, and there's the ah, the ignition. Ah, right. I see. Right. See, so it's not like. Have you got a key? Have you got an immobilizer? Yeah. Ah, is, that, <laughs> is that all it was? Yeah. Usually, it's that in the choke, <laughs> but because it's warm, it's not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, we do have a bit of dash flex when you start operating buttons, don't we? Yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> oh, where's the indicator? Uh, your your side. Right. Oh, this is this this is weird. I've never felt so claustrophobic in my life. The screen's so close, the steering wheel's right on my chest, and the only way really to have a comfortable arm is to do it Land Rover style, out of the window like that. And like a, it's got a good old old car feel to the wheel. It does, yeah, but in the fact that it does absolutely sod all for about two, like for about. Have you tried the brakes yet? Oh no, I haven't actually. Perhaps I should. Yeah. I think. Oh. Well, where, where are the brakes? <laughs> um, that's what I asked myself. Apparently, that's apparently that was safety check yesterday, and apparently it's all okay. That's as good as it gets. Well, I'll tell you what. When I get back in my own car, I'm going to stick my head through the windscreen. Yeah. Oh gosh, it's DD. Do you know what? It's exciting though. It's. I reckon it, it would only really take a couple of miles before you felt quite comfortable with the way this actually drives. Yeah, until the big lorry comes next to you. Oh, yes. Um, but yeah, there, I mean, there's practically no, there's no room in it anywhere. If this is the most leg room you could possibly have, yeah. uh, I mean, what did they make people out of in the 60s? Clearly five foot two minions. Up the hill we go. It's not fast, but it feels really exciting. Yeah. The thing is, though, it's deceivingly quick. But the speedo's so the speedo's so close to my face, I'm going to need my reading glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very bumpy as well. What do you mean? This is comfort. That engine sounds great as well. It's, yeah. Engine sounds great. Exhaust note is great. And I'm going to be looking for a fifth gear in a minute, which I don't think it has. It does. It does. It's got, it's got a Toyota gearbox. Oh, but that gear change is really nice. Yeah, it's nice to one bit these are pretty. <laughs> well, I'm nearly doing 50 down here. Yeah, that's what I mean, it's deceiving. I 
Now one thing you don't have is uh, the urge to drive one-handed. No you, fans on wheel all the way, isn't it? I mean, you can drive it one-handed, it's just you might die. <laughs> Where's the temperature gauge? Ah, uh, that one. Ah, oh, right, I see. It's all good, I turned the radiator on. Oh, have you? Yeah. You almost have to learn how to drive it. It's not, it's not actually difficult to drive, it's just... It just doesn't feel like the, a car today. Well, obviously it doesn't feel like a car today, but I mean all cars today feel exactly the same. Whereas when this was made, they all felt different to each other. I love that mechanical sound it's got yeah. has. But the other thing is, like I just said before, for yeah, these door winders, these yeah. door winders are brilliant. Yeah. Just a proper uh, machined part. Yeah. It does. It does sort of pick up the arm in that. And I think. The sound of it picking up, it's not going particularly fast, but it feels like it is. Yeah, you feel like you're going 100 mile an hour when in fact you sat there at 20. Yeah, and that gear change sound as well, that click click. Yeah. You couldn't possibly drive this car without smiling. No. And then, I've driven many a car that make you smile as you drive them. And I'm not sure this might be the most smiley car I've ever been in. Yeah, it's not, it's not quick, it's not the best handling car, but it's just fun. We're going up Blackstone Edge, in fifth gear, and so far, it's, we're only doing about 40, but it, it doesn't feel like it's, it needs to change down, so I'm quite impressed by that. Usually it's just at this point here. Ah, there we go. No, it's not going to, it's not going to quite make it, is it? Nah. Let's have a conclusion here of this little midget of a car. The question is, do I like it? And the answer is, yeah, it's brilliant. It's a fantastic, engaging drive. And it's exciting and it's, it, there's a sense of occasion whilst driving. But the other question is, could I have one? And the answer is, no, I can't afford it. But even if I could afford it, I don't think I would because quite simply, I genuinely would struggle to get in and out of it in a rush and my image of this is like a like a, a portly ruddy faced happy man in a pink shirt who's you know he takes it down the off license to get his three bottles of red wine for the evening and then he can't get out he's stuck in there and basically has to drink himself under the steering wheel for the evening so 
I don't want to be that chap. It has been an excellent experience though. With what a lovely looking car. It's a proper sports car. A proper sports car isn't fast or comfortable or anything other than just engaging. And this does the whole thing. Even getting in and out of it is an occasion. So I reckon it gets 10 out of 10 for being a sports car. And two out of 10 for being a shopping car. Struggled with the milk there, you know. So the question is, why would a chap like this, who's only 25 years old, have a car that's almost as old as me? It was passed down to me from my granddad. Um, me and him were building it when I was younger to go hill climb racing. Yeah, that's why I have it now. Screens like, where am I going to film from? It's going to, like, my camera is going to be right in my face like that. <laughs> wow. So, if you want to work out, I recommend one of these because just getting in it is exercise in itself. <laughs> 